The normal ATPase-driven sodium pump swaps three sodium ions for two potassium ions. This is shown in the animation alongside a sodium-calcium exchange pump that exchanges intracellular sodium for extracellular calcium. In the untreated diseased state of CHF, the sodium-potassium ATPase pump in the cardiac cell is pumping sodium out and allowing potassium in. This links to the sodium-calcium pump so that less sodium inside means less calcium for helping with the muscle fiber contraction, hence a weakened heartbeat. In congestive heart failure, the body retains too much fluid, and this presents a problem for the heart as a pump. When digoxin is added, digoxin inhibits the sodium-potassium ATPase transport system, leading to a loss of potassium from the heart cells and an increase of sodium in heart cells. The increased sodium activates the sodium-calcium pump that exchanges intracellular sodium for extracellular calcium. The increase in intracellular calcium enhances myocardial contraction. This causes more force to be generated without increased oxygen consumption. Digoxin also slows the heart rate, which allows more filling of the heart and improves cardiac output, hence its use in treating congestive heart failure. Here we see the action of digoxin on the weak rapid heart rate characteristic of CHF. There is an increased strength of contraction, positive inotropy, thereby increasing stroke volume, decreasing preload, and increasing the ejection fraction. The decrease in rate is termed negative chronotropy. In congestive heart failure, there is often edema of the extremities, pulmonary edema, and fatigue. In example 1, we see the effects of digoxin in reducing fatigue through reversal of bradykinesia. In example 2, pulmonary congestion is cleared following digoxin treatment. In example 3, peripheral edema, in this case ankle edema, is eliminated with digoxin therapy.